This video will contain many uh, spoilers from 1.17. So, um, I'm gonna be reviewing the snapshots for the cave update that's coming out. And, uh, the snapshots are basically called 20w45 and 20w46. I'm a bit late to the chase, I realize that. But let's get straight into it. As you can see, I kinda have a podium for this one. <laughs> I'm gonna make a podium for all of them, but... Um, I'm gonna start with the most basic one. In 20w45, they added cauldrons to lava. You can put lava in cauldrons, basically. And I've tested this in survival, and yes, you can <laughs> actually die from this. But before I die, I'm gonna put myself back in creative. But my question was, if mobs can die in this. So I'm gonna build something up and see if that is the case or not. Because if mobs can die in this, this might be useful in some way. I'm not sure how. Let's test it on a creeper, I guess. Oh, looks like mobs can die in it. So yeah, this is the new cauldron lava thing. Personally, I think it's okay. I mean, I don't see the use for it besides maybe putting in a blacksmith <laughs> or like using it for like a farm or something. Maybe something like that. I don't know much about it. But yeah, that's about it for this um, thing. And that's all. Okay, I'm gonna go to the next clip now. <laughs> the next thing I wanted to show is bundles. Now bundles are things that you use to collect stuff in survival when you have junk in your inventory. At least that's what it's supposed to do. So basically what you do, you have a mess in your inventory, you know, you want to clean it up. And you're kind of like, okay, how do I do this? And you just kind of click through it. And as you can see, the bundle's already full because there's already 64 items in the bag. So basically, the equivalent of 64 items can fit in a bundle. So that means you can have 64 different types of one item, and you can fit it in a bundle, if that makes any sense. But the catch is, with armor and stuff, you can't actually... Um, <laughs> me trying to find the bundle be like... Uh, so the catch is, you can't actually... Um, store your armor in here because it's a stack itself and that applies for all things that stack that don't stack so yeah that's basically the bundles job slash duty thing and not only that um i was questioning myself if we can like put a bundle in a shulker box or something and the answer to that is yes but can we put a full bundle in a shulker box now let's see the answer to this yes we can can it be the other way around can you put a shulker box within a bundle no you cannot so there, if you had questions about that um there are your answers but yeah that's about it for the bundle from what i know Next thing I will be showing you is candles. There are 16 different variants of candles, including its own. So plus one, basically. To light these candles, you need a flint and steel, and you go blop, and it lights up. You can put these on cakes as well. It's like celebrating a birthday, except when you don't have friends, it's not that exciting. But also, um, you can put four candles within a single block. So if I set this to night, really quickly. You can see how the one block candles kind of give off less light and as you add more candles it gives off more and more lights. So yeah, I think this would be useful for like <laughs> if you're having a birthday party, if you like want to decorate your rooms with candles and stuff. I also think like these uh, red ones could be like dynamite and the uh, initial first thought I actually have with these candles was like Harry Potter question mark sort of thing. But yeah, this is a cool addition. I feel like this should have been added to Minecraft a long time ago. But now that it is, it's quite nice to have candles. 
<laughs> At least it's like a nice decoration for builders and stuff. And I feel like it can be used in a technical aspect as well with the lighting levels. But anyways, um, I'll show you the next part of the snapshot. <laughs> Future me here, realizing that Candles can actually be waterlogged. It's just the light will turn off. But yeah, <laughs> just wanted to add that really quickly before I quickly, before I like forgot about it. So yeah. The next thing I want to talk about is copper ore. Now copper ore is a bit um, easy to find without the world. It's pretty common compared to most ores such as iron and stuff. And looking at like, it looks like it spawns in vault blobs like iron does and coal for example and to smelt this you just put in a furnace and it gives you the ingot so that's really all it said about copper it didn't say anything else about it but here you got the ingots at least so there's actually other things about copper i'll be showing you in a second so yeah let's skip to that as you can see in front of me there's definitely copper blocks in the game so, there's different variants and stages since the copper kind of ages over time. They wanted to add an aspect of history to Minecraft, so they kind of thought that this block could give it a way of showing that. So, here we have the normal copper block, and as it gets older it gets lightly weathered copper block, to semi-weathered copper block, and a weathered copper block. So they also have a cut variant of this, as well as uh, for the cut variant, a slab and stair type for all four of the um, things. And if you want to make sure that the block does not change the color it is, you need to add bead wax be or honeycomb, I suppose. You need to add honeycomb to the copper to turn it into it's to make it stay in its form basically and from what the thing says that's really about all there is to do with these copper blocks besides that i think it's very valuable for like a steampunk sort of style or possibly even like a, a medieval style could value in these as well I just feel like this block can like show the history of some buildings, poss possibly result in some ancient builds as well. But yeah, the potential for these blocks are very high and I like them personally. And yeah, I hope you guys like the blocks as well. Next thing we will be exploring is amethyst geodes, which, where amethysts can be found. The layers surrounding the amethysts are tough and calcite, which is this new white block and this new, um, like, stonish kind of block. I feel like those textures can be really, like, helpful to, like, build things. Like, this mixes with diorite pretty well, and this mixes with, like, andesite, gravel, cobblestone, all that stuff. But anyways, this is the block of amethyst, in which it makes... Like, let me just turn this up for you guys. It makes the best, like, just... Let me just turn this all the way up. I don't know if you can hear that, but... It makes the best noise ever. The sound of this block. <laughs> Even when you walk on it. It's like a little twinkle in the ear. But anyways, within these amethyst uh, geodes, you can find these... Amethyst clusters, which come in many different forms if we look up amethyst. I don't think I can spell this. Oh, amethyst. Yeah, so it comes in a small bud, medium bud, large bud, and an amethyst cluster. Now, it can only be spawned on a budding block, which doesn't really have a difference, that much of a difference, because Sides like that thing in the center that's like a crack or something. And if you're wondering if there's a way to harvest this, I think the only possible way currently is to use a silk touch pickaxe on the um, amethyst cluster in order to pick it up in any of its stages. But besides that, um, 
I'm pretty sure it will give you the um, amethyst shard if you mine it with like a regular pickaxe or something. And also, it cannot it can be moved by redstone, but you can't harvest it with any farms or technical stuff. So yeah, redstone will not be essential for harvesting this. You might need to just find it in your world and rely on getting as much of this as possible. But yeah, that's about it for the amethyst geodes and what amethysts are basically. So yeah, I'll jump to the next part of amethysts. Okay, so I made a derp. Um, Basically, you mine the amethyst to get the shards with a fortune pickaxe. And with the ones that you want with just the crystals, or the clusters, if you want the clusters, you just mine it with silk touch. So I got that part right, at least. But just um, in advance, I wanted to tell you guys that don't use a normal pickaxe, you need fortune. But anyways, um, I'm actually done with the amethyst part. So I'll be going to the next part of the snapshot. You might be wondering, what is the use of amethyst? Well, one of the many uses of amethyst is to make this tinted glass, which completely blocks out lights from the inside of the area. So if I go in here, for example, you can see it's a bit darker than when I'm outside here. Now to craft this, you need to put um, a piece of glass in the center and surround it by four amethyst shards. And that's really about it for the tinted glass. This is quite, I think this would be useful if you want to like, um, like hide something behind something or something like that. That was a lot of some things, but this can be also used for like cards, I think, or maybe like greenhouses. I'm not sure, to be honest. I think it's just a cool feature that they added to the game. And I feel like this block can be used in many ways. Hello, I am a pirate now. But anyways, the next part of the snapshot is the spyglass. As you can see from 20W45, if you watch that snapshot, they fixed the lenses so it's easier to see. But basically what the spyglass does is it zooms in on things um, so you can see from farther away. It's kind of like the Optifine, Optifine zoom if you cannot get Optifine for some reason. But like, I don't see myself using this, but if I want to be pretend to be a pirate, then maybe. <laughs> Which is probably going to be never, let's be honest here. But I think it's good for players that are like new to the game and they don't know how to install Optifine, etc, etc. And this is basically crafted with two um, copper ingots and one amethyst shard. So yeah, if you want to craft it, just do that. And that's basically it for the spyglass. Here we have the lightning rods. Um, as you can see it in action right now. This is essentially used for stopping buildings from burning in Minecraft. It has around uh, 32 block radius from each side of the um, rod. So it goes 32 blocks out, and that's how it's like how much area it protects. But that's really it for the lightning rod. Besides, it can be kind of a charge creeper farm. <laughs> and yeah, but yeah, it's it's useful for protecting your builds, and I can see it being used as a pipe. Because honestly, it kind of looks like a pipe. Is it just me? I feel like it's just me. The next thing I want to show you guys is that rails are can now be waterlogged and you can put ride on tracks in the water even though probably in survival if you don't have a conduit or something you're probably gonna die so just be aware of that and yeah I'm pretty sure mobs can also ride on this I haven't tested but actually I want to test right now to see if it works let's see with the creeper we spawn it here Will it go in a minecart? It does not look like so. So I, I guess mobs will not spawn in minecarts underwater. Unless I guess you push them from the shore into the water. That could work. I'm not sure. I haven't tried it. But yeah, just wanted to let you guys to know that you can now put rails underwater and make your own underwater minecart. So we are here on the 
Mojang Minecraft.net page, and so you can see, um, here are the changes in 20w45. So now experience orbs can merge together in large quantity quantities to basically like reduce lag and stuff, and yeah, that that's basically it. Particles now appear when piston blocks are breaking. I guess that was like a bug that was needed to be fixed. And simple firework rockets with one gunpowder can now be crafted using the recipe book. So that's good here. And also, um, formerly grass, known as grass paths, they have been changed to dirt paths. And uh, besides that, that's about it, to be honest. And then here we have technical changes I do not understand, so I'll scroll through this and you guys can uh, go visit this website if you want, but <laughs> I have no idea what's going on, if I'm being honest. Moving on to the, the cliffs update stuff. This is powder snow. Basically it's a trap block in which you can fall through it and Mobs can also fall through it, so if we place a creeper on top, you can see it slowly falls through the block. And this would be a better example of it. Um, but yeah, that's powder snow. And the only way to walk on this, I think, is to have leather boots on, so you can safely walk across. Now, <laughs> I'm gonna move away from the creepers for this one, from the creepers for this one, since it's a bit dangerous. And I'm gonna just build up a few layers of snow. So basically, if you're in like game mode, if you're in survival and you fall through this block, you get the freezing effect. And it slowly like starts to hurt you the longer you are inside the block. And let's see if it does any damage or anything. And I heard that having leather on reduces the effect of freezing. I think, at least. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. And then you can see it slowly fades out as we um, exit the block. But that's about it for powder snow. You pick it up with a bucket, you put it down with a bucket. <laughs> so that's a bit of a pain to collect, but- Ah! I guess we're gonna have to deal with it. <laughs> that I'm leaving in the video because, yeah. That was almost too embarrassing. <laughs> that scared me so badly. <laughs> now moving on to the technical changes of 20w46a. They re they removed this and that. I, I don't really know what's going on. But they removed this command basically and they replaced it with something else. There's a bunch of other things you can look at here. I'm no technical genius but if you want to look at this then go ahead and visit the minecraft.net website for these snapshots. The, okay, I just wanted to quickly go over the changes from 20w45 to 20w46. Uh, the range in which a lightning rod attracts lightning has been doubled. Like I've told you, it's a 32 by 32 block radius, which it used to be a 16 block radius. Copper blocks are now crafted from copper ingots from four copper ingots instead of nine, like it was in a previous snapshot. Sky color now varies smoothly when moving between different biomes. And buttons that change value like difficulty can now be controlled with a mouse wheel. Clicking on buttons, the button that changes value while holding sh the shift key can change, can shift key changes to previous value. I'm not sure what this means, but also, there's a debug world type um, can now be accessed while holding Alt key with Shift before, apparently. So yeah, those are the changes from W45, 20W45 to 20W46. Just wanted to quickly cover that for y'all. But anyways, this is going to be the end of the video. So <laughs> if you like the snapshot video, leave a like, subscribe, comment below and hit that notification bell to get more notifications from my channel. I'll see you in the next